What is going guys? My name is Wolf Sickness and welcome everybody to another YouTube video. So today is the day everybody that I'm going to be showing you the best recording settings for OBS Studio in 2025. Yes, a new updated one. So obviously first of all you've got to go down here to press settings. If not you just go right up to the top file and then press settings. So then this little box will load up. So we're going to get straight into it. No faffing around. So Obviously, leave this to whatever you want. These are my settings just in case you're interested. Appearance, I find this one a bit like it looks better, basically. Doesn't matter. It doesn't affect the performance or anything. Obviously, skip stream and go straight onto output and then go onto recording tab. So, so, so. What I would recommend is recording onto a separate hard drive. Is that an external hard drive or it's just an internal hard drive? But if you record onto your C drive, obviously, that's going to fill up very, very quickly and when you're loading up windows and everything and just everything on your pc is just gonna be so much slower so definitely would recommend that so next thing definitely one million percent guys go for mkv the reason behind this is because if you're recording an mp4 i have done so many times before uh let's say if i did like i don't know a three four five hour recording and then boom it just dies your pc dies obs dies something crashes boom it's gone mp4 once I did Hogwarts Legacy and I lost like seven, eight hours of content, I was so freaking sad, honestly. Um, but with MKV, all you have to do, I can show you after how to convert it. But all you have to do is like if OBS crashes or something, then you just convert the file. And obviously that's how it you make it editable in editing software. It doesn't affect your file. Your PC could freaking crash. You could turn it off. The power could go out and your video file is always going to be OK. So always do MKV. Otherwise, you're going to lose so much footage if you use MP4. MP4 is good if you're going to do like quick kind of content. But still, I do not recommend it because if it crashes, you've literally lost everything and your file becomes uh, corrupt. So the next thing is video encoder. So in NVIDIA NVENC H.264, if you have a NVIDIA graphics card, if not, do the AMD version. Uh, basically the same kind of hardware encoding. But if you do not have either, then do X264 very fast. That is what I do recommend. Audio encoded, just leave it to AAC. And then audio track, I have, when I'm streaming, I do everything on number one. And then I have like my microphone, my game audio, music, uh, voice chat, and I think that's it. So obviously I just separate it. And then in the editing software, it goes as all different tracks. So that's amazing. So if I just scroll down just onto this bit. So... Rate control, always do a constant quality preset. I had to think about what that was for a second. But yes, so do that because if you're doing a constant bit rate, let's say if you're doing 50,000, then, uh, for example, I'm doing desktop recording. Why do you need 50,000? So when you have constant quality, then if you have a really high picture motion scene, it's going to like get up to like 80,000, 60,000, 70,000, some really high bit rate. But then when it's at this, like, just like a still kind of screen, then obviously it's going to be at like, I don't know, like 2,000, 3,000 bit rate, but it's going to look exactly the same, no matter what is happening on the screen. Um, I used to do 23, but 22 is the best for file size compared to quality. 23 isn't as good quality, but it's a lower file size. So if you have it at like the highest, like 50 or whatever, it is going to look pretty damn bad, but your file size is going to be amazing. If you have a constant quality preset to number one, wow, your quality is going to be amazing, but your file size is going to be terabytes. Like, it's going to be freaking massive. Um, so, yeah, I would definitely recommend 22. It's the best for the file size versus quality. If you go any lower, yes, it is better quality, but when you're uploading it to YouTube, it really does not make a difference, guys. It really does not make a difference. So, I, I don't see the point of doing that. So, yeah, just keep that to 22 and... 2022 no 22 keyframe interval keep that to zero there is no point of changing that it just messes up some things preset uh i keep to slow so preset number five good quality if you go for number six or seven yes it is better quality but when you're uploading to youtube i upload in 1440p so it forces vp9 as well um and it just i mean yeah you can see a tiny bit of quality difference but really does not make a difference and if your pc is lagging as well and you're playing a game on the same pc then yeah it really does not make a difference 
especially when uploading to YouTube. If you've seen my video quality, then you can really do see. So yes, so the next one is tuning. High quality, you want high quality, don't you? What's the point of doing low latency and everything? That's only if your PC is lagging uh, and if you're just playing like a really highly intensive game or something, then yeah, please do put that down to low, lat low latency, but if not, then it's okay. So multi-pass mode, uh, make sure that's on two passes. That is one of the best ones. It does say quarter resolution, that doesn't mean anything guys uh, there is full resolution single pass think about like when you're in um exporting a video in like Premiere pro davinci or whatever you use it it basically goes through the frames twice but obviously it's hardware encoding so it's really quick um profile keep that to high and then look ahead and adaptive quantization keep those both out on um then b frames keep that to two and then obviously your audio do whatever you want with that that's what i use video Keep that to 1920 by 1080 or whatever your resolution on your monitor is. But then I do export. So my monitor is 1440p, but obviously I want to keep everything at 1920 by 1080. And then I export in a higher resolution. It just, it makes it better quality in Premiere Pro. I can do an exporting video if you would guys like. Um, resolution is matched. So you used to have to change that to some samples with the old versions of OBS, but with this one, it's absolutely fine. And then whatever frame rate you're doing at, but obviously I'm doing 60 FPS because, you know, I want the smoothest 1440p, 60 FPS. Hotkeys, up to you. Accessibility, up to you. Advance, change for advance, change the process priority um, to high or anything like that if your PC is lagging. If not, it's completely okay. So now I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, for the MKV. So if we just go to file, remux recordings, and then we're gonna get one of our files up. So that's obviously one that I'm recording right now. Let's do my previous recording. So that's 90 meg and eight minutes, because obviously when you're doing constant quality control, it's amazing. So we're gonna just press open and then it's just going to go on there. So then I'm just going to press Remux and boom, it's all done. It's all Remuxed. And as you can see, that is Remuxed right there. Obviously, I'm just going to delete that file really quickly because I do not need that. And that's the video that I'm currently recording. And as you can see, that's an MKV file. So then I always press clear finished or clear all items completely up to you and then close. And then that's all done. But yes, thank you everybody for watching. My name is Me Will Sickness. You guys are absolutely awesome. This is just a quick little guide of OBS recording settings for 2025. I hope you enjoyed it. Remember to like, comment and subscribe. And I'm really happy that I'm back into the YouTube game. It's so freaking awesome, honestly. But yeah, Yes. Thank you everybody for watching. My name is Mobile Signature. You're going to be absolutely awesome. Peace out. Much love and have a good day. And don't forget, dab on my haters, everybody.